Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Niels Johansen. I'm from the Beckhoff office in Lübeck in northern Germany and I'd like to introduce you to Winkit BSD today. If you have any questions for the webinar, um, feel free to use the questions window and also feel free to use the chat window and we will answer some of these questions after the webinar or at the end of the webinar and all unanswered questions we will answer via mail afterwards. Yeah, Twinket BSD. So Twinket on FreeBSD. What is the history of operating systems at Beckhoff? Well, Beckhoff uses the Wintel combination for PC-based automation and this successfully since more than 25 years means we're using a Windows operating system together with Intel CPUs. And in this case, we use the Windows Embedded Systems, means Windows Embedded Compact, Windows Embedded Standard, or the Windows 10 IoT Enterprise versions. But unfortunately, Microsoft has discontinued uh, the development of the Compact versions of Windows. So there is no successor for Windows Embedded Compact. And especially for the small devices and ARM devices, there's no Windows successor anymore. And part of that, several customers asking frequently also for alternatives to Windows because they don't like to use Windows in, in their field or in the control system or in their IT network, or they have some restrictions to use Windows. And yeah, therefore, Beckhoff began already four years ago to investigate into an alternative operating system. And the result is Twinket BSD. Twinket BSD is a combination of Twinket and the FreeBSD operating system. So it's the intention is to have a small operating system, which is a small footprint in case of memory, but also a very uh, small footprint in case of um, performance consumption of the system. Um, it needs to uh, address the industrial needs, means uh, it needs to support the newest technologies. and um, it needs to have legal rights so that we are able to ship hardware with a pre-installed operating system. And the best fit for Twinket um, we found was FreeBSD because it supports um, multi-core, multi-processing as well as multi-threading. You can have multiple users um, connected at the same time to the system. It supports 64-bit CPUs as well as um, ARM, so um, from very small CPUs to uh, the newest uh, multi-core processors and it has all the state-of-the-art technologies we use from the PC as a file system, networking, USB connection as well as graphics and all the um, yeah daily used internet protocols and technologies. What is FreeBSD and where it comes from? You see here right on the right side in the history um, in red marked for the FreeBSD system um, started in the mid of the 90s, the development and came from the BSD system. And the BSD system is uh, the name for Berkeley Software Distribution, which has been developed at the University of California in Berkeley. And it has its root in the Unix system. So FreeBSD is a full Unix operating system. You see um, other versions of the BSD systems like NetBSD or OpenBSD, but here's also another branch from BSD um, coming from NextStep. Uh, NextStep going to Darwin to the macOS kernel, which is used for from the Apple systems. And a complete another de development um, was here by the GNU development by Richard Stallman and then the Linux kernel by Linus Torvalds. Um, one difference is that FreeBSD is a full operating system, means it includes the kernel, the user stuff, the utilities, the configuration and everything in one system and in one repository. So you can install FreeBSD totally and you have a full system installed. While Linux is only a kernel and you cannot only install Linux to have a full system, you need always something on top of that. And that's the reason why you never install Linux. You install a distribution like Ubuntu, Debian, or whatever. Um, and BSD has a so-called BSD license, which is a permissive open source license, and does not have the GPL license as Linux has. 
And this offers us the possibility to change the operating system, to integrate Twinkit into the operating system and ship hardware with the operating system and also enables you to assemble machines, integrate this, um, our systems into the machines as control system and ship it also from your side to your customer and sell it to your customer without any legal restrictions, um, which might not that be easy with a GPL licensed application. Where does it come from? Well, FreeBSD is managed in the FreeBSD Foundation. Um, and this FreeBSD Foundation uh, is led by an elected core team. So it's uh, like, a, like an democratic elect elected team, which is the leadership of this foundation and which is um, defining the ways and the development of FreeBSD. Um, as I already said, the whole system is developed in one repository, including the kernel configuration and utilities. It's targeting um, all areas around servers, desktop systems and embedded systems as well. And is a full Unix system, so it offers the modern features of security from other Unix systems. It is very stable, um, once because it's a complete operating system in one repository, so the interfaces are very stable. The system itself is very stable and the compatibility to previous versions or to other software versions is very stable. Um, it has a low footprint and is easy to configure and adapt. So it is easily possible for us, but also for, for you to customize the system as you need it. Who else uses FreeBSD? We have here now yeah, two columns. Um, who sells devices or systems with FreeBSD? And as I already mentioned, there are the Apple systems. Uh, which are based on the BSD kernel, like macOS, iOS, and tvOS, um, which are BSD-based and, and therefore also the most public systems which are BSD-based. Another unknown system or unknown case is that the Sony PlayStation, since PlayStation 3, is also based on FreeBSD. And there you see that the license restrictions are very low because Sony doesn't need to publish that their operating system for their um, PlayStation is based on FreeBSD. Nearly nobody knows that while using the PlayStation um, just because of an reverse engineering from a developer um, it was mentioned that the, or detected that this is a FreeBSD based system. Another console is the Nintendo Switch OS which is based on FreeBSD as well as Cisco products like the Cisco Internet Operating System or the Async Operating System as well as security gateways and so on from Cisco are based on FreeBSD. NetGate, uh, NetGate with firewalls, um, security appliances and so on, as well as QNAP with uh, storage systems um, and even Panasonic on a TV is using FreeBSD. The second column is about software suppliers or service suppliers. So they are not shipping hardware and they are just offering um, services. And there is, for example, Dell EMC and iX Systems, which are offering uh, storage systems. Juniper OS and Mac, OF, and Mac FE for secure operating systems. But a very public one, um, popular one is also Netflix. So streaming of videos and films and movies. And if you watch this evening, maybe a movie on Netflix, then it will be streamed to you from a FreeBSD system. So the whole infrastructure and streaming services from Netflix are powered by FreeBSD. Um, another popular service is WhatsApp, so uh, European, and European and US communication uh, for messaging services um, is also based on FreeBSD. A few facts why especially Beckhoff has chosen FreeBSD is um, yeah, one very important fact, the industrial proven system that it's stable and performant a performant and a state-of-the-art and uh, used widely in the industries in different areas. It has an industry-friendly license as I already mentioned and um, we have no restrictions in using this system and selling hardware with the system and it's fully open source means we have full access to the source control, um, we can adapt it as we need it and we are independent of third parties means if uh, uh, yeah, like Microsoft now discontinues the development on, on Windows Embedded Compact. Um, yeah, we are not 
uh, independent, uh, we are not depending on this development and um, we could support FreeBSD for many years by ourselves, by patching it ourselves and um, continue the development ourselves without any external um, party. What else does FreeBSD offer? It's a common Unix operating system. It offers the Unix and Linux tools known from this area like shells, uh, the secure shell SSH together with a secure copy and secure file transfer protocol as well as common editors uh, like the VI and the Easy Editor. Um, it uses the Clang compiler and the LLVM system um, for linking and this is all part of the FreeBSD base system but on top of that you can install a lot of tools by ports or packages. For example, the Nano Editor, the Bash, a popular shell from Linux, but also desktop environments like KDE, Genome or XFCE. You can also install web services like the Nginx web server or Apache, as well as databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL. Um, you can use other um, programming languages like Python or Java or whatever. Um, up to uh, web languages like Node.js and PHP. On top of that, FreeBSD offers a Linux compatibility layer, means that Linux user mode binaries could run on FreeBSD as well because of this layer with, which is abstracting this Linux uh, kernel API calls to FreeBSD API calls. Another um, important feature is a hypervisor and a container system integrated in FreeBSD. So you have the so-called Beehive as hypervisor to install virtual machines in FreeBSD and use them and the so-called jails for containers on the operating system. Also very important for us is the ZFS file system uh, which has a lot of features we are using um, for Twinkle BSD which I will show later. The architecture from uh, in regards to Twinkit um, is yeah, still the same as before on Windows. So we have the engineering still on a Windows operating system and the Twinkit 3 XAE integrated into Visual Studio where you configure your system, you implement your PLC code or C++ code for your real-time environment and then you use the communication via the transport layer ADS to the runtime and inside the runtime you have a real-time kernel, you have a PLC runtime, C++ modules, um, up to safety modules and so on and then you have your device drivers for an EtherCAT master, for Profibus or can open communication to communicate with um, yeah, the KBus terminals or EtherCAT terminals. But now the runtime is not only available on Windows, but also on Twinkit BSD. It means your embedded PC, um, you can now choose whether you want to have an embedded PC running on Windows 10 or on Twinkit BSD. And the architecture of Twinkit is still the same, just the platform is different. And by a platform abstraction layer we have integrated into Twinkit. Uh, we can use the applications one on the other, one on each other on both operating systems. So um, viewing from Twinkit, this uh, interface hasn't changed, it's still ADS and if you do an ADS broadcast search to create an ADS route, you see here Windows 10 systems, Windows compact systems and a Twinkit BSD system and you create the same route and use the same Twinkit engineering environment to connect, to configure and to start your application on this system. We offer Twinkit BSD as an image, means we have a specific FreeBSD image we um, ship with our devices and offer also as download from our website site, which is actually based on FreeBSD 12. It has an adapted FreeBSD kernel because we improved some parts of the kernel for a better real-time performance. Um, it uses the ZFS file system and has a default disk usage of around 350 to 360 megabyte. And we applied already different hardenings, uh, security hardenings and different configurations on the system. The installation um, on, a hard, um, on a hardware system, on an embedded PC for example, is done by a so-called MEM stick, which is a USB stick I will show later on. 
and uh, this USB stick offers you to install the operating system as well as doing backup and restore of the system. Um, the installation of the system is happening in so-called packages, so the kernel as well as the base system is um, shipped as package and installed as package as well as Twinkit and Twinkit functions are also installed as package and this allows you to update the system from this package management. And we offer a package server, so um, behind the URL tcbsd.backoff.com you find the Backoff hosted package server which offers you the packages for the operating system, the kernel and the base system as well as uh, Twinkit XIR, uh, the Twinkit functions and so on but also third-party packages means if you want to install another shell or another tool or an engine server you can do this also from this package repository. So Backoff will support all the Backoff specific packages, the other open source packages are supported by the common open source community. Um, this repository is um, separated in two branches, a testing branch and a stable branch and every month we will offer the latest versions as testing versions. You can install um, and update the packages from the testing branch for testing in the laboratory and later on um, these testing versions will go into the stable branch and in the field your systems which are running in the machine um, could be updated from the stable branch. And then you can update the whole yeah, toolings, the whole system, the kernel and the base system from this package server. But you can also install an own package repository server in your in your local area network or inside your IT infrastructure in your company. You don't need to use the public server over the internet. If your embedded PCs, for example, are not allowed to connect to the internet, then they can connect to your own local repository and get these packages from there and update by your own package server. I already mentioned ZFS, the Zettabyte file system, which has originally been developed by Sun and has been moved into the open ZFS project. In the meantime, it has also been adapted to Linux. Um, it has a lot of features. Um, it combines the file system with the volume managers and in this way um, yeah, it offers functionalities like copy on write. Means if you change a file, the data segments on the hard disk are first copied, then changed and then a pointer will be changed from the old file or the old data segment to the new data segment. And in case that your power switch is off or you uh, switch off the system or whatever and this writing of a file will be interrupted, then your file system is still safe and stable because the pointer will not be moved to the new and changed file before it has been written successfully. And in this case you cannot get a corrupt data system. Uh, another important feature we are using a lot is snapshots and rollbacks means you can um, create a snapshot of a specific version of the file system together with all their files and then you can roll back later on to this specific version of the files and set back and restore all these changes you made in the meantime. This you can use for restore points for backups and we use this feature also for a write filter. Um, so the write filter you might know from the Windows embedded systems we adopted and have now also a backup write filter for the Trinket BSD system based on this snapshots and boot environments. If you want to exchange files between, um, between a Windows system like your notebook and the FreeBSD system like Twinkit BSD on the embedded PC by for example a USB stick then you could use the FAT32 file system because this is interoperable between both operating systems. There's one main difference um, between the Windows system and the Unix systems. So Unix systems like FreeBSD but also as Linux are mainly command line interface based operating systems means if you um, integrate a hardware or um, mount a USB stick or whatever, all these devices and interfaces are anywhere mounted inside the file system. Also configurations are files on the file system. 
And if you want to um, execute anything or start a process or whatever, every tool is a command line tool at the beginning. And this command line tool is then called with arguments and parameters. So everything could be done without any graphical tools and from the command line. This is the first intention of this operating systems. Later on, a lot of these tools from the command line will be extended by a graphical interface or graphical tools are then using the command line interfaces to offer any uh, graphical interface. But in the beginning, everything is command line based and this allows you to automate and script everything because everything you type, I in, type into the command line or change in the command line, you can easily put into a script like a little program and execute this script. And it does the same as you did before manually. And so you can easily automate all operations on the, automate, uh, on the operating system. Windows is different. Windows is coming from a pure graphical based system, means the most tools are developed first as graphical interface. And later on, it might be that these graphical tools get a, a command line interface. And Windows has also a command prompt, but it has very limited features because the most tools doesn't offer a command line interface and also um, many operating system specific configurations don't offer a command line interface. Microsoft has also uh, moved a little bit um, into the open source directory in the last years and implemented a new shell, the PowerShell, which offers much more possibilities, but nevertheless the most tools are first graphical tools. And this is different on Unix and Linux where everything is from the first place implemented as command line interface. And this will be the same for Twinkit BSD, means the primary interface for Twinkit BSD will be the shell. So if you do specific configuration and changes in the operating system, you need to use the shell and the command line to do these adoptions and changes and work with the operating system. There is the option to install a desktop. So um, you could install X11 with KDE or Genome or XFCE as you see it here in the screenshot, but this will not be supported out of the box by Backoff. If you connect from remote to the system as you did by uh, for Windows by the remote desktop protocol, um, the replacement is now the SSH. This is a secure and encrypted shell over the network which opens the shell of the device on your local system. You connect there and then you can type in your command line into command line tools and operations into this shell. Um, since Windows 10 there's an SSH client integrated into the operating system um, but there's also another tool called PuTTY which allows all, you also to use SSH to connect to a system. Um, another interface would be a web interface. So we are planning end of this year to offer a full screen HTML5 browser. Means if your embedded piece to C starts up and you connect a, a monitor to the DVI port, then you will see a full screen browser and there you can show the device manager or the Twinkit HMI. And the back of device manager is as well as on Windows, now also supported on Twinkit BSD, where you can do the first configuration, like uh, changing IP addresses, changing host name, and so on. And also the Twinkit HMI is supported on Twinkit BSD to allow to have a web interface and a, a visualization on the system. Also above a web interface, we offer a terminal, so you can open a shell or a terminal via the browser on the system and um, type in your command line tools into command line commands here into um, the shell in the browser and um, access it easily without using um, yeah, a putty client or something similar. But there are also a lot of other tools for Windows offering you to interface um, Unix and Linux systems. One example here is WinSCP which you could use to connect to a Twinkit BSD or FreeBSD system and use it similar as a total commander or similar tools to connect via SCP or SFTP and show up the file hierarchy. So you can download and upload files, you can open and edit files and all above this graphical tool inside Windows. 
Twinkle BSD will start with supporting all the embedded PCs, means supporting the CX51, CX52, as well as the CX20 series. And all of these are 64-bit CPUs, means um, we start to support 64-bit only and will follow up end of this year with, a, with ARM devices, which will be announced um, end of this year. And also, which IPCs will follow next year, we will announce end of this year. So starting with C60, C6015 or C6017, um, they will support Twinkit BSD beginning of next year. If you want to use Twinkit BSD already today or try it for testing, uh, for example, in a virtual environment or install it on an embedded PC, you can download it from our website. Um, you will find it behind the URL www.backoff.com slash twinket minus BSD and there in the bottom is the download window. If you need to know or if you're asking which Twinket functions are already supported on Twinket BSD, um, you will also find this on our new website. On the new website you will um, find in the bottom right the product finder and if you go to the product finder for the area Twinket, um, there is, you have here the different headers and there's a header for operating system and it has a filter and if you filter for the operating system Twinkit BSD, it will show you only Twinkit functions which are supporting Twinkit BSD already and uh, yeah, we will continue the development and port more and more functions to Twinkit BSD and we'll update this list here accordingly. Okay. So let's go and see it live, um, how to use Twinkit BSD and how it looks like. Um, I have prepared here um, different things I'd like to show you. First of all, I'd like to show you the memstick. So I um, um, give me a second. So I have here an embedded PC below my desk and I have here a Twinkit system so I can do a simple broadcast search as you would do it with any other Twinkit based runtime and search in the network for devices. So here I see now two embedded PCs, one is with Windows 10 and another one is with Twinkit BSD. So I can add here a root Similar as I would do it on Windows, I can use an encrypted secure ADS root, type in here my administrator password, create the root here. Okay, close this connection, choose the system, and I have here a small Twinkle project. I can go to real time, look which CPU cores are supported. I can configure isolated cores as well as shared cores. I can configure my tasks with my task cycle times and here's a small PLC project with a simple counter and now I can activate this solution and if I have a project which is already running on a CX5130 for example on Windows together with the EasyCAD master and EasyCAD terminals um, I can use the same project as well as on a Windows Twinkit runtime as well as on a Twinkit BSD Twinkit runtime. So I start here Twinkit and run I log into the system and I see the counter is increasing here. Okay. So if I, I already mentioned, um, I can connect also with the device manager to this system. So let's close Twinkit here. We will not take a too much look into Twinkit. We like to see the operating system. So if I type in here the IP address together with slash config, then I will open the device manager website of this Twinkit BSD system. I can log in here via my credentials, administrator and my password. And then I see the device manager website similar as I would see it on a Windows system. I can 
see and change the host name here. I can see this is Twinkit BSD with this specific version. I can see which hardware is it, which serial number has this device and so on. But I can also see and configure the network interfaces, the IP addresses, um, see the SUPS integrated, but also here change from DHCP to fixed and static IP addresses, as well as see which software is installed, which tools are installed, and which Trinket version is running on the system. And here in the bottom right, I can see a button for the web console, so I can also open here the shell, type in here my credentials, and now I'm in the shell of the operating system. This will behave the same as I would use other SSH clients, like here SSH from Windows, so I can use here SSH at administrator, and then the IP address, type in the password, and here you see now I'm connected via SSH to the shell, and here I'm connected via the browser to the shell. Let's close this and take a look to the system. So here I now in the command line of this operating system, I can use common command line tools. Um, some of them are similar as on a Windows command prompt. Most of them are very similar as on a Linux system. So I can use ls to show which files are in my system. For example, ls in the root directory. And here I see which, uh, which directories are there shown in the operating system. Um, I can also use ls-l for a list view and see here that there are these common directories like bin for binaries, um, sbin for service binaries, as well as etc for configuration files. I have the directory boot, where is the kernel and the drivers for hardware devices inside. And then I have here uh, the USR directory, which is here. So I can also show up what is in USR. And this directory looks quite similar. It has bin, it has sbin and other directories. And the organization is um, following the POSIX standard that this is uh, the first level. And this is mostly for single user access and uh, the operating system itself with the kernel and so on. Then the second level is for the user interfaces, the multi-user access, and so on. And both is from the base operating system. Everything which comes on top, which is installed on top of the base system, is below this local directory, so which is inside user local. And there you see again bin, etc, sbin as the same directories. This is also following this POSIX standards for the hierarchy. And if you look from Twinket, this is below etc Twinket, there you find the Twinket directory with the directory 3.1. And inside 3.1, you will see the same directories as you would see on Windows, like boot, driver, system, target, and so on. And if you take a look to boot, there you find your current config, the project I just activated there, as well as the PLC directory with the PLC um, project below. Um, I can use uh, the command line to create directories, to create files. So I can create here the test.txt file. I can print text and I can use so-called pipes to um, pipe this text and attach it to the file. And if I then show the content of the file, I see that the file now contains the text ABC. I can also use editors um, in the command line, like the easy editor. Use the easy editor to open the test.txt and add here a second line with def. Here on the top, I can see different operations I can do now. By escape, I can leave the editor and he asks me whether I like to change. Yes, I want to save the changes, close the file and print again the content of the file and see now there's ABC DEF within this file. We have also extended um, the system by a specific command line tools for Twinkit, like the TC sys exe. And with the parameter mode, I can see that Twinkit is actually in the run mode. So the LED of the Twinkit system is green. 
Um, but I can also use this to set the system into config, to set the system into run, to show the net ID, to show the system ID, to show the fingerprint and so on. And um, to do this, so if I want to change now from uh, run to config, he tells me that my operation is not permitted because I don't have here administrative rights. So I have here the user with the name administrator, but different to Windows, the administrator here has no administrative rights. So the user has just this name to be more compatible to the former Windows systems. Um, if I want to get um, administrative rights, there is a super user called root. And to become root, I can type in su to become super user, type in my password, but even that is not permitted. This is the case because we disabled the root account totally on this operating system. And this is a common security pattern uh, we have adopted here for the Trinket BSD system. And instead of becoming a super user, you call um, yeah, tools with an sudo tool, which does the next operation you do, like an ls slash, with administrative rights. So then he asked me for my password, and then he will operate this ls command with super user rights. So with the rights of the um, root account and so with administrative rights. But we don't use sudo as it would be used on Linux, for example. We use an alternative, and the sudo command is just an alias to this alternative. We use do as, which is coming from the OpenBSD system. So if we type in do as ls slash, then he will execute this ls command with administrative rights. And so I can now use do as to execute the tcsysexe.exe minus config to change into the config mode. And if I check now the mode again, now we are in mode config. And so I can start and stop the Twinkit runtime also via these command line tools. What is also integrated is the man pages. So um, to get help for different commands and see how these commands behaves, you have the man command to see the man manual or man page or documentation, for example, for ls. So I can open man ls and see here, ls is a list directory contents. It has these different kinds of arguments. And then I can scroll down and up in this manual to um, see all the different operations I can do with this command. The same for the hierarchy I've shown, man here for hierarchy. And then he shows me, okay, the bin directory is user utilities. Um, the boot directory, there's uh, the drivers and the kernel inside. I have the etc directory and there's now the full documentation for this um, hierarchy inside this manual. Okay, so let's take a look uh, even deeper into the system. Um, what is the system offering and doing already? So if I use the command ps to show all processes which are running in the system. Then I can see that here are on top are different processes from the kernel and the drivers for the hardware. And here are the first user mode processes like the DH client, which is a DHCP client to get the IP address over DHCP. I have here a mouse connected, therefore this mouse daemon. I have here a device daemon, which initializes the hardware devices. Um, I have here the syslog daemon, which is like an event logger on Windows. He is getting messages from the different processes and storing this into log files. And we have the TTY daemon. This is the daemon which offers us this terminal over the web interface. Um, we have a NTP daemon for the network transfer protocol, a network time protocol to get a time synchronization. We have the SSD, SSHD. So the SSH daemon, which offers us access over SSH, SFTP, or SCP to the system. Here we have a Twinkit system service. Um, we have an Nginx server, so a web service, which um, shows up the IPC device manager website. We have Authelia, which is this authentication service we have seen to log into the device manager. 
MDP. MDP is offering the operating system specific information to the device manager website. Then we have a cron daemon, which is a scheduler and user mode to execute different scripts and operating, um, yes, uh, operations in the operating system. And then we have your different terminals, which are shown up if you connect a monitor to the device. So you see it's quite stripped down, just very the essentials you need for driving the system are running here. And you will also see it if you check the opened um, network services. So check out all the open ports. So we see here some internal ports for MDP and Othelia. We see the ports 443 for HTTPS as we use it here for the device manager or the terminal over the web front end. We see the ADS ports from the Twinkit system service. We see SSH on port 22 and NTP on port 123. And this is also a security feature because um, of this low footprint of the system and this hardening of the system to run just the essential processes and open just the really necessary ports, you have a very low possibility of attacks um, because some external tools or um, hackers can only attack what they can connect to over the network. And because here are very few ports just opened, there's a very limited amount of uh, ways to access the system and to attack the system. Um, I already mentioned the package management. So package management is handled over the tool called PKG. And if I type in PKG info, I can see here um, are all the packages listed which are installed on the system. I find here the OS packages like the kernel, uh, the user land tools like the base system, configurations, documentations, and so on. Um, I see here back of specific tools like um, a BIOS API, the IPC diagnostics and device manager website, MDP services, the Twinkit 3 runtime together with the NCI tools, the CNC tools, ADS tools, and the Orthelia service, um, the write filter from Backhoff, as well as other tools here, uh, curl to download files, do as, as I said, to get administrative rights as root user, and different web libraries for the um, website, and the package manager itself, as well as tools from Backhoff to have restore points, um, and the TTYD for the shell over the browser, as well as a small tool to connect to uh, and set up wireless connectivity. And the configuration of this is happening in the file below etc pkg and there is um, FreeBSD. And here you see that the package management for, um, for FreeBSD is not used here. Uh, we use it for TCBSD. And there you see the URL, tcbsd.backoff.com, which I already mentioned in the presentation. So you can simply open this website. And here you see now the package repository. You see the two branches, the stable and the testing branch. And if you take a look into this, there are the packages. You find here the meta information. And below all, you find um, all the different packages which are available. Um, here you find, for example, the OS packages um, here in the specific versions, but you find also the Twinkit 3 runtime packages um, as well as Twinkit 3 functions. You find here um, these functions and this means all these tools and services and functions are installed via packages. And if we update the repository here, you can also update your local machine from this repository by doing pkg upgrade. And then you will fetch the informations from this server and check your installed packages. So he has found uh, nearly 1,200 packages on the server. He has found nearly 30 packages on your local system. Then he compared them and all of them are up to date. And otherwise he will ask you whether he is allowed to update these packages as well as the kernel, the operating system and Twinkit. 
Um, you can also search for packages. So do SPKG search for TF3, for example. And here I see now there are two packages, the TF3600 for condition monitoring and the TF3800 for machine learning. And then I can type in do SPKG install TF360X minus condition monitoring. Now he sees, um, hey, there's the version 3.2.22.0 available. Do you like to install that? It costs you around 230 kilobyte. Yes, I like to install. And then he downloads the package from the website and installs the tool locally here into my system. And if I take a look now to user local etc twinkle 3.1 driver auto load there is now the tccm driver here which is for condition monitoring which i have just installed as you have seen here by this package and by on this way i can install twinkit functions i can use uh, install an apache server and mysql database and so on everything which is available here as package uh, in an easy way via the command line and later on I can easily upgrade also these tools to the newest version. Um, another feature I already mentioned in the presentation is ZFS. Uh, ZFS is managed by the ZFS tool here. So I can say ZFS list and then I see all these so-called data sets. It's similar like partitions on the, uh, on the hard disk and every partition is here inside a data set and then mounted to a specific drive to the system. And then I can say T all because then I can also see snapshots. And I see here already with this add snapshots called factory reset. So what are snapshots? Um, I can use ZFS list and search for home because I'm actually in this home directory, home administrator. This is the directory for this specific user and it's below this data set and then I can say ZFS, do a ZFS snap shot, type in the name of the data set, user home and call this test 01. And if I take a look again, then I see now, here is now my new test 01 snapshot. And if I open my text file and add here just some exclamation marks at the end. I see my text file now has these exclamation marks extended. And then I can type in do as ZFS rollback to Z root user home and to this snapshot test 01. And after that, my changes has been rolled back to this specific version I have created before. And what you might have not seen or um, recognize is it happened automatically and immediately. It means it took less than a second. And this is because he does not copy all these files for making a backup or a snapshot of that. He just copies an amount of pointers. So just pointers are copied and means a snapshot is really consuming no memory and is consuming no performance of the system. Um, and therefore it's very easy and very handy to use the snapshots. And we use the snapshots now for different things. For example, here, as you see, snapshot of factory reset. After the initial installation of the operating system, the system itself will create a snapshot for every data set and call it factory reset. And then we have a a special tool which is uh, implemented by Backhoff. It's called Restore Point. And this offers me the possibility to call do as Restore Point Rollback to Factory Reset. And then he, this tool will check all data sets and roll back every data set to the Factory Reset snapshot. And then the system is rolled back to the situation as it has been delivered from our factory. And this is why it's called factory reset, because we do a full reset of the system to the original state. And then you can start from the scratch. But you can also create with this restore point tool your own snapshots from different dates or versions. Or if you like to upgrade your version, 
or your system or upgrade the kernel, you can first create a snapshot and a restore point. And if something behaves bad or wrong or your machine has stopped because of an upgrade of your boot project, um, you can easily roll back to another version um, from a day before or whenever. And we use the same functionality also for the write filter. Um, it's used by um, snapshots. So if we say do as service back of write filter enable, then we enable the write filter on the system. And he says it will be applied after the reboot. So if we take a look now, we see here new snapshots with BE1 and BE2 for the boot environment from the write filter. And if we reboot, um, the system will always roll back the system to this boot environments here um, from the state where I enabled the write filter. And that means after every reboot, I have a clear state of my system and everything has been rolled back to uh, my intended status. And if something has been changed in the meantime, um, this change is gone after, after the reboot. And this is the same behavior as it has been used on Windows Embedded and Windows Compact before. Um, we already also see the syslog um, for diagnostic messages and so on. And these messages are um, stored in a directory called var log. And here you see different log files. So it's similar like the Windows event logger, but in this case here in files, and the main file is messages. And then you can open the um, cat var, var log messages, for example, and see here, here you see um, different Twinkit messages. You see how the system starts up. You see here um, how Twinkit starts up, how he loads different drivers. And you will also see if here are, um, any error has happened or any malfunction has happened. Or like here at PKG that you have installed something. And all of this will be listed here via the syslog in this var log messages. Okay, so there are a lot of questions. Mm. I'm afraid I cannot answer all of them today, but I will write you an email later on. So to conclude, BSD license means there's no copy left on the software, means it's easy for us and for you to ship hardware and ship machines with Twinkit BSD because there's no legal restrictions because of the license. Um, we are able to reduce the license costs because uh, it's lost, uh, less cost effective for us. Uh, we have no end of distribution by third parties as we see it nowadays with Windows Embedded Compact. We have a full customization possible with the system so we can easily adapt and change the system to our needs. Um, it has a very small footprint with just 350 megabyte on the C fast card. And because it's so uh, stripped down and hardened, it has also a very small attack surface. And therefore the security of a modern Unix system with all its tools like SSH, um, it's very easy to install and to update via the memstick and the package management. It's very, very easy to backup and restore. Um, of the full system, but also of specific areas of the system with snapshots and rollbacks. We can use the write filter. We can even backup the system while running. So live backups are also possible. Um, yeah, we have a very long lifetime and availability for devices because we can manage the operating system ourselves. And we have full Twinkit 3 functionality. So all the Twinkit 3 functions like multi-core, isolated cores, the tasks, the um, high cycle times down to 25 microseconds are possible with Twinkit on FreeBSD. And all the Twinkit functions also will become available step by step as several of them are already available today. And you can also use a wide variety of tools and uh, software from the open source community. Um, further on, to get further information, um, you will get this presentation later on, sent via email. 
Um, I will show you some websites. So the first website is backoff.com slash twinket minus BSD, where you will find twinket BSD. And if you go down here to documentation, downloads, software and tools, downloads, you can download here in a zip directory, the image to run it in a virtual environment and on an embedded PC for testing purposes. Um, if you take a look to our products, for example, embedded PCs, and then you choose the CX5130, for example. Um, below ordering information, in the bottom you will see CX5130 minus 085. So um, this is the order number for the CX5130 together with the Trinket BSD operating system and the Trinket 3 runtime. And this is already orderable and available and will be delivered since today as since a few weeks, so you can already order today and we will ship it already. Um, we have a manual for Twinket BSD especially um, as PDF. So here you find a lot of these things which I mentioned, but also a lot of things I did not mention today. Um, how to access the system, how to configure the system, how to mount a USB stick, um, how to install packages, how to install and use the restore points, the snapshots, and so on. The same documentation is also available in the information system. So if you go to the information system below embedded PCs, operating system, there's Twinket BSD, and here you find the same manual as in the PDF. And a very good read and introduction is also the FreeBSD handbook, um, where you can get in touch with FreeBSD, uh, the basic operating system, um, how to configure the system, how to establish permissions, how does the directory structure look like, how to use the shell, and so on. Okay, here are the links, and um, I will try to figure out a few questions from you. Um, here's a question for commonly used commands, and um, the most common commands are mentioned in the in the manual. So take a look into the manual um, to find them. Um, yeah, there's a question if there's an issue with an upgrade or an installation of a package, how to go back? Well, you can use the snapshots and the restore point tools to uh, roll back your changes. Um, the Twinket 3 licenses are the same as on Windows as on Twinket BSD. So you can use the same license file um, to use and then for Twinkit 3 runtimes and functions on Windows as well as on FreeBSD. And the, what is the benefit between restore point and ZFS rollback? ZFS rollback is just working on a single data set. But if you have a lot of data sets, like in our case by default 10 or 12, then the restore point will roll back all of them and not just a single one and he will do a reboot afterwards. So it's more handy and more convenient to use. And he also offers the possibility to create a snapshot over all data sets and roll back over all data sets. Um, there's a question of memory consumed by snapshots and so on. Um, yes, you can take uh, take a look. There are the two commands, the zfs command and the zpool command, and they give you the information about how many memory is used for, for which data set and uh, for each, each snapshot and so on. Which Twinkit engineering version is required? Um, I would recommend you if you use only Twinkit PLC and Twinkit XAE, then the Twinkit 10 is uh, suitable. If you want to use, uh, for example, C++, then you should use the uh, 4024.12 as minimum, um, but the upcoming .13 will be even better for the support for Twinkit C++ on Twinkit BSD. Um, ADS is fully compatible as on Windows, so you can use um, a Python client for ADS. Also, you can use the GitHub ADS client we also use the ADS libraries for C and C++ uh, on Twinkit BSD, so you can implement your own C++ application on Twinkit BSD and integrate our ADS client. Mm. Okay. 
Yeah, so the rest of the questions um, I will answer later by mail. So I will send you a mail with the answers. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for listening and participating to this webinar. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me directly or to send an email to go to webinar at backoff.com. Okay, thank you and bye bye.